Hello and welcome to day six of Webflow and Code, uh, where I teach you the underlying code you're writing in Webflow. Today's episode will be about document flow. And if you haven't checked out yesterday's episode of Landmark, then do so. Document flow in a nutshell is the arrangement of elements on a page um, as defined by the style properties that are set on those elements and the order that they appear in. There are three ways to position elements to affect the document flow. It's display, position, and float. There are two types of display types, block and inline. Block level elements can't have any other elements beside it. Uh, anything that is near it will be pushed onto a new line and that, that block level element will take up 100% of the width of the page. Inline elements can have elements side by side of it and they actually take up the width of the content that's within that element. So we'll do a quick um, explanation of block and inline. So what you'll see now is that H2 um, or headings is one of those elements that is a block level element. And you can see here that it's just taking up 100% of the width of the, of the um, parent element. So the parent element is 80% width and it's taking up 100% of that. Um, so yeah, if we, if we play around some inline level elements, which I would say would be a link and then uh, potentially we've got two links next to each other. You see that automatically that bounding box is um, the, the width of the element itself. But because this is a block level element and this is a block level element, because they don't allow things to float side by side, this has got nowhere to go. But then if I make this one an inline element, you can see that they, they, they butt up against next to each other. I'll leave a link in the description of all the inline and block elements. Of course, not all of these will be available in Webflow, so you'll have to just pick out the ones that are relevant. Floated elements, I find, cause the most amount of confusion, and that's mainly because of the effect they have on other elements in the document flow. Floating block level elements to the left or the right of the parent element allows other block level elements to flow alongside it. Floating elements take them out of the document flow, which I can explain now. So I made a quick demo here because I can't show this on Webflow, but you can see you've got two divs which are block level elements. And as you would expect, they just, they don't allow them to flow alongside each other. So they're just stacked like this. If I make this, if I float this um, left, you'll see that it takes out of document flow and the blue, the blue layer here is now floated alongside um, this, this block level element and it's, it's, taking up the, it's taking up the entire row. So what we would typically do as developers is we would add a clear fix around this wrapping element which, which then make, uh, forces it to respect the the content width and the, the size and width of its content essentially. So I've quickly just done this. This is, this is something you would do. You would just create this clear fix class um, and just apply it wherever you need to. But if I add this class here, CF, you'll see that we get that we get we get our clear fix back. But as I say, Webflow takes care of this. Um, already, so we don't need to worry too much about the clear fixing. So I can demonstrate that in our project. So if I just float this, you can see that everything, um, this this element here is flows, uh, flowing alongside it. But from from our description, what would normally happen is all of this would would flow alongside it as well. But if I take a look at it in the browser, what Webflow is doing, it's adding a clear fix around the wrapping elements here meaning that these all then fall into the document flow. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know, but I find that most people get tripped up on the effect of floating um, than, than there are people who actually know what they're doing and, and intend for an element to behave in a certain way when it's floated. There are a few different position properties. All elements start as position static. Different position types could be uh, static, relative, absolute, fixed and sticky. And then these themselves can be affected with the top left, bottom and right 
properties. Static, sticky, and relative are all in document flow which means they'll affect other elements around them in the way that you would expect them to. Sticky is an interesting one and it's a fairly new property, but sticky is a relative element until the browser viewport crosses a threshold that you define with the top left, right and bottom properties, and then it becomes almost fixed. Um, it's kind of a weird mix between um, position fixed and relative. How you would traditionally do this in, in normal web development is you would write JavaScript to say, um, this element is position relative, and then you would use JavaScript to monitor the position of the viewport, and then when, when you can detect that they've crossed, then you would make it position fixed. This property actually just removes the need for any of that. So all these elements are by default statically positioned, but if we ever play with relative right now, and we make this position relative, this gives us the ability to change the top le left, right, and bottom. So if I do that, I can then just start moving these around like so. Pretty straightforward, it's in the document flow, there's not really much more to say about it there. Um, so, and then if we make this one sticky and then make that 10, then what you'll find is that when we cross that threshold, that 10 pixel threshold, it almost becomes um, stuck to the page. So that's what we mean by sticky. Absolute and fixed cause the element they're applied to to fall out of the document flow, which which means that elements won't respect their elements around them won't respect the position um, or size of these elements. Also, the size of the absolute position or fixed um, position elements will actually become the size of the content, much like you would find in an inline element. Absolute position allows you to move an element anywhere on the page relative to its closest relative parent. So by default, this, this is the body, but then you can make it relative to a, another parent by making that parent either relative, which is kind of the most common thing you would do, but it can also be affected by the by being positioned relative or sticky or absolute in itself. And then you would move this absolutely positioned element with the top, bottom, left and right um, in relation to that parent element. Fix is very similar to absolute in that you can move it anywhere on the page, but um, it only respects the viewport. So using the top, left, bottom and right properties, you can move this element um, in relation to the viewport. It's really good if you want, to, if you want an element to stay um, permanently on the page. Both the absolute and fixed elements, you can kind of, they almost act like layers and you can control that layer with the Z index. Let's play around with uh, position absolute and fix. So if I make this position absolute, it's just going to take it out of the document flow and everything everything around it is just going to behave to the nearest inflow element. Um, so now when I now I can play with this. Um, hang on, is that relative? That's static green. Um, so now if I begin to play with this zero zero, I would expect this to be the top left of the page because by default, um, everything is, uh, it's, it's respecting the body, which it absolutely is. Now, let's make this a bit more clearer, 10 and then 10. But now if I was to make this a position relative, you'll see now that that piece of text has is now respecting its closest relative parent. Um, these can actually be any of these properties, so it would be relative to any of these properties. The only one it doesn't respect then is, sta is static, apologies. Um, absolute, and then the only one it doesn't reflect is static. So now it's just fallen back to the top of the page. The other element is fixed. So if I make this position fixed, you'll see that now that appears 10 to the 10 to uh, pixels from the top, 10 pixels from the left, and it will just follow me down the page. And you see that it's it's taken up the width of the content inside. So what I'll need to do then is make this width 100%. And you'll see that we've got that central um, central line text that we wanted. So that's all there is to know about the document flow. I find the biggest uh, hurdle that people have to get over is they don't understand, they understand what they're doing to the, 
to the element. They know how floating will affect that element or how absolute would affect the element they're applying it to, but they don't quite understand how the elements around um, that will be affected. And that's what document flow is. And by changing these properties, you're placing something in and out of document flow. So hopefully by understanding a bit more about uh, the document flow, you can be a bit more deliberate about your uh, styling property changes. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, tomorrow will be my final episode of the seven day challenge. So what I'll do, I'll leave a poll for you to vote on the very last episode and the winner of that will um, obviously be, be made tomorrow. As always, if you need me to clarify anything, just leave me a comment in the comment section below. Um, and if you want, if you if you constantly get stuck with something in Webflow, then let me know and I might be able to help you and potentially even make a video on it. Um, so just leave me a comment in the comment section. And as always, happy no coding.